In this video we'll talk about paired tests. It's often the case that measurements from two data sets can be paired up in some way. For example, we can make repeated measurements of the same system, measure some characteristic for two different tests, or measure the same quantity with two different pieces of equipment. A common source of paired data is sequential data, for example, comparing sales in 2020 in the same places as sales in 2021, or comparing pre- and post-treatment groups with the same people in each group. Sometimes trials are designed to create match pairs, for example, if participants are carefully chosen to have similar characteristics, for example, the same medical conditions, income level and age, but different sex. With match pairs, we can use a more sensitive test than the standard t-test to check for differences. For example, here's some made-up data for sales of a particular book in different locations. Obviously, the number of sales varies a lot between a small town and a busy airport bookshop. The within-year variation here is much larger than the yearly variation at the same locations. Because the variation by location is large, it would be difficult to use the standard t-test to detect a significant change between the two groups. Instead of looking at the two groups separately, we instead analyse the differences using a t-test. This is called a paired t-test. The null hypothesis is that the mean difference between the paired observations is zero. In practice, we simply compute the differences between pairs and perform a one-sample t-test. Recall that the one sample location test requires computing the t-statistic, so you just compute the relevant quantities from the difference column and compare it to the critical values of the t-distribution. The paired t-test requires the differences be at least roughly normally distributed. If this isn't the case, then we need to use a different approach. One way is to use what's called the Wilcoxon signed rank test, which tests the hypothesis that the medians are equal rather than the mean. The normality assumption for this test is weakened to simply asking that the differences have a symmetric distribution. To perform this test, we first calculate the absolute value of the differences. We then rank them from largest, rank 1, to smallest, where we use average ranks to break ties. The test statistic requires computing the signed rank sums w plus and w minus. The symbol theta here is a function which is 1 if its argument is true, otherwise 0. Basically, w plus is the sum of the ranks of the pairs with positive difference, and similarly for w minus. The test statistic is then whichever one of these is smaller. It's a bit difficult to show, but for large samples, in practice n greater than about 10, the w statistic should follow a normal distribution with a given mean and variance, and we compute the p-values and significance in a straightforward way. This test is an example of what's called a non-parametric test. Basically, anything involving ranks and medians is usually non-parametric, and in general, this means that we don't make any assumptions about the distribution of the data. These types of tests are usually good for very non-normal data, so if that's the type of thing you'll be dealing with, you might want to look into these non-parametric tests. They're generally a bit less powerful, but make fewer assumptions about how the data behaves, so apply in more scenarios.